over here because I finally have some sunlight, but it's beaming right in on my normal spot. So we're on my bed today for this video. And also I have a question before we start because it's the weekend. So I don't normally like get ready on the weekend, but I had to film this video. But I'm really trying in the new year not to use as much dry shampoo on my hair. I use a lot and I feel like I really honestly damaged it. I feel like I've thinned my hair out a lot. I use Batiste so I know it's not good, but I wanna hear your dry shampoo recommendations. Please leave them below. I'm hoping to just find a better alternative, but one that is not super expensive. I know the Living Proof one is supposedly amazing. I'm not spending $43 on a bottle of dry shampoo. I'm just not gonna do it. But I'd love to hear your favorite dry shampoo recommendations below. Um, on the weekends, I just pretty much wear a hat. So that's what we're rolling with today while we're filming. I asked all of you guys over on my Instagram story. So if you don't follow me on over there, you can, but also you don't have to, no worries. But I asked for your ride or die dark, forbidden, or taboo romance of all time. Because I wanted to see what is your guys' favorite. I mean, obviously I talk on here a lot about my favorites, but I wanted to get some of yours, put them out here for you guys to see. Because honestly, you know, you guys are always asking me for more, especially like dark romance recommendations. But here's the thing, I can only read so many so quickly to give you guys new videos every few months with that trope. So I figured let's let you guys also share with each other. So... I'm gonna go through them. I was kind of surprised by some that I didn't see on here, but I was also very happy to see some that I did see on here. So anyways, without further ado, these are in no particular order and I'm just gonna go ahead and share them all. Um, I'm not really gonna go too deep into synopses on all of them because a lot of them I haven't read, uh, but more so just wanted to share with you guys what you're given. So. First up, I was very excited to see this, Cat and Mouse Duet by H.G. Carlton. Y'all know if you have watched any of my like dark romance videos, I absolutely love this duet as well. I would second this recommendation, Dark Stalker. The second book especially is my absolute favorite in the duet. It was one of my top books of 2022, I think. That was when... I read it. It's incredible. It's very polarizing. I feel like people either love it or they hate it. I'm personally one of the people that loves it and I'm very glad to have seen it make it on this list. Next up, I got Devious Obsession by S. Mastery. So this one I haven't read yet, but I have heard, I've heard mixed things about this series, but it is one that I'm interested in reading. So I can't remember like which one in order of this series it is, but I'm pretty sure the first one, he like breaks her leg and it's a bully romance. <laughs> I've heard it's just like wild but people have really been enjoying these so I don't know if this is the one where he breaks her leg I feel like that one was called brutal obsession so devious obsession I think is just like one of the ones in the series I don't believe that they're like that you have to read them in order so I think you could jump into this one but I've seen them going around a lot so it's definitely piqued my interest now this next one is on my tbr it's on my priority tbr for this year and I got this from two separate people and that is the torment duet by Dylan Page so this one is a very dark and forbidden romance so cat and mouse duet is just I would say dark uh devious obsession I don't know what that fits into torment duet I think it fits into dark and forbidden I think I think it's an age gap and I want to say does this one have a motorcycle club in it or am I incorrect on that um I've seen this floating around for years and I put it on TBRs all the time and I've just never gotten around to it but this is a duet that I know so many people say that like once they read it that they don't stop thinking about it that this is one of those that just kind of like leaves it's print on you and I'm really excited to get to it at some point this year and again seeing it on this list like only makes me want to further bump it up. Next up the Legacy of God series by Rena Kent so I got that as a whole as an answer and then I also got God of Malice which I'm pretty sure is that book one. So this I also have on my TBR specifically God of Fury I think that just came out it's an MM romance in this series I think it's like book number five I don't think these have to be read in order but again it's like kind of fun experience if you do I typically like reading books in order but I'm trying to be better about just like picking and choosing the ones that I want to but Rena Kent she is just a super super popular author and all of her books I would say lean dark at least all the ones that I've read lean dark I think this series leans dark I think it also maybe leans bully the books that I've read by her were definitely bully and I personally enjoyed that there's also another Rena Kent one on here. Here, where oh, Empire of Desire by Rena Kent. 
again another one and this one I had not like heard or I don't know if I had heard of honestly a lot of Rena Ken's I think just because she has so many that they kind of like blur in my head a little bit but this one as soon as I saw it I added it to my Goodreads TBR I'm pretty sure this one is a dad's best friend arranged marriage romance so I'm pretty sure her heroine she like kisses her dad's best friend and he is like mm -mm, nope I don't want this like get away from me and then they end up having to get married and they like hate each other sold Sold. I added that to my TBR this morning. So that was the other Rena Kent book that I got on this list. But I know she's super popular. And like for good reason, I've really enjoyed the books that I've read from her. So next up now this one. This is absolutely no shade no tea to the person who entered this one. Me personally, I don't feel like it's dark. But that is Untouchable by Sam Mariano. So this one isn't like taboo or forbidden in any way because they're like they're both in high school. They're the same age. Uh, but there is a scene at the beginning that is very messed up. And then it kind of goes from there. So a lot of people say, it, it's like, I feel like there's a dialogue around this book of is it dark or is it not? Me personally, I don't think this book is dark. I think that beginning scene is very messed up and, you know, definitely sets the tone for especially Carter moving forward. Like that he is just like, you don't even know what to think about him after that scene. I mean, you know that you don't like him after that scene. The book's not dark as a whole though. And I think I went into it expecting it to be dark and it's not at all really, except for that first beginning scene. So still wanted to include it because there are some people who do consider this book to be dark. Me personally, so if you are, if you maybe read some of the books that I do, you know, like have that really like edge towards like pitch black that you read sometimes, just know that this, you're not gonna be getting any of that past that like initial scene at the beginning. Um, but it is good. And I want to read more from Sam Mariano. I've read two books so far and I enjoy both of them. Stitches was my favorite, but I want to keep going with more. From her. Okay, so this next one I did have to look up because I hadn't even like heard of it before. So this is Hard Limits by Suki Williams. So this one sounds interesting. I honestly, the blurb is like a little uh like I'm still not even quite sure like what the tropes might fall into but it sounds dark maybe a little forbidden so I think our heroine is like uh an escort and then she turns into like an assassin so it's homeless teen turns Da, 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 turned elite call girl with some unusual extra extracurricular activities my interest is peaked my interest is peaked and I had to look it up because I haven't heard anyone talk about this one so uh yeah if you've read queen of hearts obviously besides the person who put this in because clearly it's one of your favorites but anyone else have you read queen of hearts so this was just my friend fucking around with me but I'm gonna include it anyways one of my friends put twilight in here Olivia just <laughs> I appreciate the candor. Like one time when I had asked, um, I think I was asking for book recommendations. She put the Bible in there and I was like, thank you. Um, love that, Liv. So you know what, fuck it. I'm throwing Twilight in here for you. Uh, you're not watching this. <laughs> Next up, so actually I started the first book of this last night and I'm already very intrigued. So uh, it's the Hollowed Crows MC series by GN Wright, but the first book that I started is Distrust. It's the first book in a three book series and it's an MC dark, I think it was friends to enemies to lovers and why choose but then I also think some of the guys are together so our heroine in this one she's the daughter of like the motorcycle club MC. and at the beginning of this book we get like a two years ago on her 18th birthday and she finally makes a move on her three friends three best friends from the motorcycle club and they're all a little bit older than her and but she's grown up like being friends with them and everything but her dad of course was always like she's off limits but then they all like leave something happens maybe like she leaves but I don't know I'm only a couple of chapters in but now her dad is dead and she's back with the motorcycle club and they all hate her now so I don't know I'm very intrigued by it I read another GN Wright book uh last month and I liked it so I was like I want to check out more from her so I'm reading this one and I'm enjoying it so glad to see it pop up on this favorites list one of the ones that is also my personal favorite so I'm very very happy to see it on here was Manacled by Senlin Yu this is a Harry Potter fan fiction uh it's Handmaid's Tale meets Harry Potter's it's uh like if Voldemort won the war and Hermione is one of the last members of the order and she's given to Draco for him to try to unlock some of her memories and the final order secrets that Voldemort needs and be his handmaiden. And let me tell you, this truly is just a masterpiece. I've talked about this time and time again on my channel here. I absolutely love Germany fan fiction. I love Manacled. It is my favorite one that I've ever read. I don't see it being topped. It truly is just one of the best things I've ever read in my entire life. It's masterful.
masterful. It's slow burn. It's heartbreaking. It's beautiful. These two characters deserve each other like no other and they deserve happiness almost above every other character that I've ever read in my entire life. And I know, I feel like fan fiction gets a bad rap, but I feel like more people are starting to come around to it and realize that it's like genuinely well written. I mean, obviously there are like some out there, you know, whatever, but it's truly beautiful. And I think if you're ever curious about it, I mean, it's definitely dark, but it's so, so, so good. Next up is Tormentor Mind by Anna Zaries. So again, so this one I think came with the, like the comment with it was cause it was like their first dark romance that I ever read. And I always feel like that one's always gonna have a soft spot for you. Like when I look back Corrupt, even though I don't really feel like that's that dark anymore, but Corrupt by Penelope Douglas was one of my first like darker books that I ever read. And I feel like, you know, obviously besides Penelope Douglas just being like one of my favorite authors, that book is always going to have a special place in my heart because it was one of the first like darker ones where I was kind of like oh my god they're kind of like mean to her what is this and it's just you know it has that nostalgic feeling so for this one this one obviously is that for the person who said this one and I've heard I actually have some Anna Zaris books I have a duet of hers that I haven't read yet uh I think it's like Devil's Lair or something I think it's like a dark nanny romance but Torment Friend, I don't know let me know if this is one that I need to bump up and prioritize. Okay, The Ritual by Chantel Tessier. I love Chantel Tessier's books. I have such a fun time when I read them. Sabotage is my personal favorite that I've read, but this one is really, really good. So it's the first book in the Lord series. Sabotage technically is like 0.5. It's like kind of a bit of a prequel, but like you don't have to read any of them in order, but it's a dark college secret society romance, super toxic. Definitely he triggers if you're going into any Chantel. I mean, definitely he triggers if going to into any of these books on this list because obviously oh my hands are too like slippery from putting lotion on them I mean definitely he triggers if you're going into any books on this list but especially like Chantel's just definitely heed the triggers but they're so much fun and I was happy to see this one make an appearance on here next up is Torn by Carrie and Cole so this one isn't dark however it is taboo and forbidden it's a dad's best friend right Yes, it's been so long since I've read this book. I'm trying to remember. I think it's dad's best friend and he's like kind of her uncle. Um, not like blood related or anything, but because they're like best friends and been raised by him. And she's like freshly turning 18 in this one, I think. Okay, this personally is not my favorite age gap romance, but so many people love it. And I want to keep going. I want to read Tide. That's the next one in the series. It's like, I feel like it was one of the OG kind of age gap ones that was going around back when I was really starting to read a lot of indie romances. So definitely if you are interested, I'd say give it a go. I know so many people love it and so many people love Carrie and Cole's books. So now next up, y'all are gonna be like, you put this one in here and I did not. Someone else did. Always Been You by QB Tyler. This is my favorite QB Tyler book. It is one of my favorite, I would put it in like top five, all time favorite taboo romances. It's adopted siblings. James and Gabrielle are amazing. It's an age gap too. They're 10 years apart. Um, nothing obviously happens when they're grown up. They're both now like grown ups and living in New York City and kind of getting reconnected again before they go home for Christmas. And they kind of realize that they're both attracted to each other now, that they're both adults. And oh, it's just so good. It's so good. It started out as a novella and then QB expanded it into a full length book. However, it's really short still. I think it's like under 300 pages. It's amazing. It's just hot. It's not super angsty, but you know, they're st they still do are like cautious about it because they know that obviously it could create problems with their family when they tell them, when they tell their other sibling and when they tell their parents that they're together, but it's just so good. Q QB just like hits it every single time, but this truly is my all-time favorite QB Tyler book. I don't know if she can write another one that I'll love more than these two. I don't know what it is when I read it, but when I read it, it just hit for me. You know, some of those books just do and they just stick with you. And that's how this one has been for me. And it will just forever and always be a favorite book of mine. Okay, next up, this nine minutes one. It didn't have an author with it, so I don't know. So sometimes it's like, I don't know some of these titles. So then when I'm looking on Goodreads, I'm like thinking that this is the one. So I think, I think this is the one that they were talking about, nine minutes by Beth Flynn. I could be wrong on this one so if this was you who put this in feel free to correct me below but when I read the synopsis it sounded like it was probably right because I think this one was, is about our heroine who has a child she gets like abducted from a gas station when she's on a vacation with her family or something and is kidnapped by the president of this MC and then she grows up in like these new surroundings and I think maybe she like ends up falling in love with her captor and like the president of this MC when she gets older first of all the cover is a little interesting but the 
blurb kind of hooked me. So let me know if this one's right. Even if it's not, I think I'm interested in reading it because it sounds good. I was just like, is this a romance? I assume it's a romance judging by the cover, but next up. So this one came with the, with a comment with it of being new to taboo romance. And that is praised by Sarah Kate. And I think this is a great one for people who are kind of new into taboo or forbidden romances to start with because it's not dark. It's hot. It's fun. There's some emotional depth to it. It is an ex's dad and boss employee romance. And it's definitely a little um schminky because he owns a spicy club and she ends up becoming his assistant for said spicy club. And it becomes like a dom sub dynamic between the two of them. So it definitely has, you know, like elements of taboo romance because it's his ex, or because it's her ex's dad but truly like these two they just do really work well together and Sarah Kate just can really do no wrong to me I haven't read a book of hers that I haven't enjoyed so next I was not surprised to see the Cheyenne from that tall book girl put Hush Hush by Lucia Franco in Hush Hush is great. It's a huge age gap. It's one of the biggest age gaps that I've ever read. And it is a high-end escort billionaire romance. So our heroine in this one, she's kind of struggling for money. One of her best friends is like, hey, I do this job. She thinks she's a bottle girl. And she's like, hey, I can get you an interview. And she's like, oh my God, thank you. She goes to the interview. It's not that kind of job. And she ends up going out on calls, but it's like, you are not allowed to fall for your clients. But then she gets James and she ends up falling in love with James. And it's obviously a huge age gap. I think he's in his 50s and she's like 22. So it's a lot of fun. Lucia Franco just can do no wrong to me. And you know what? So let me tag in because then I was very happy to see three people submit the Off Balance series, which is my all time favorite taboo romance, forbidden romance as well. So this one follows Rhea and Kova and it is an Olympic gymnast and her coach. And it is an age gap. There's cheating. It's angsty. It's obviously very off limits because they're coach athlete and because he has a girlfriend and there's just a lot of things that get in their way. It's a five book series following them truly and forever and always my absolute favorite romance series. I don't think another series will literally ever be able to top the magic that Lucia created with these two. And it's just always my favorite. And I'm so glad that when I see other people loving it just as much as I do. So this one, I don't know. I personally don't know if it fits or if you were just letting me know that you read this book, which if so, thank you because they put Garen Park by Nordica Knight and that they loved it. Uh, just finished this base on my rec. Thank you very much. I'm so glad that you read it and loved it because y'all know I have not shut up about Garen Park since I read it a few months ago. It was my top book of last year. I literally love this book so 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 much uh I I personally don't think it fits into dark taboo or forbidden but I wanted to like plug it in here anyways it's an mm hate to love enemies to lovers motocross romance it's so good there's some caretaking in here and even when they start having like benefits because they're interested in each other they still hate each other and they still hate each other even while they start hooking up with each other it's great it's amazing and I'm so glad that you read it and loved it next up Another one that was on my top 10 last year. And truly, I think one of the darkest books that I've read is Take Me With You by Nina G. Jones. So this one is a captor captive one. And this one truly is messed up because of the psychological aspect of it. There are a lot of other captor captive books that I've read, especially I feel like mafia ones where it's like a little bit lighter. The heroine kind of fights back a little bit more. She has like a little bit more agency, even though she's like in these circumstances or whatever. You just kind of always know that she's like gonna be okay because she has people like looking for her, rooting for her, whatever. Our heroine in this one is kidnapped by a man who like is, he's a serial criminal. He breaks into people's homes, he harasses them for a night and then he moves on and then he's going to do the same thing to her and her boyfriend but then things kind of go awry and she ends up begging him to take her to kind of spare the other people there and he does but he doesn't really know what to do with this. He's never had someone that he's like taken and he just breaks her down psychologically, mentally, emotionally, like every part about her he breaks her down until she like does doesn't really know like up from down it they it ends up being their romance and it very much is heavy into like Stockholm syndrome truly some of the content in it, yes it's shocking but I wouldn't even say like that this is necessarily has like the most like dark things in it but it's just so like it's so dark psychologically is what I guess I'm trying to say I absolutely love this book it's one that when you read I don't think it's one that you'll forget and yeah I I'm, was glad to see it pop up on this list. Next up, the original Sinner series by Tiffany Ry Rice. Rice? Um, okay, I think the first one is The Siren. So I have seen 
this this book around for a while the one with like the high heels on it so this one I think a woman is like writing a book and in order to get it published she ends up getting a deal with like an editor or something if she'll like rewrite the whole thing the way that he wants it I don't know I feel like though this is like an OG one like this book has been out for a while right 2012 so let me know if anyone else has read this because I think I've gotten this one before for like books that you guys want me to read. So let me know, it's not in KU, but I can check if my library has it. Next up, Bloodied Hands by Adelaide Forrest. So I have heard, so I've heard of Adelaide's Forrest books over the years, but I haven't read any by her. So actually I was excited to see this one come through because she was just announced as being Mystic Boxes. No, it was just Pepper Winters. Who was the, I think her box is the one that is supposed to be shipping somewhat soon, right? She was one of, I'm a Mystic Box uh, subscriber. So she was recently announced as one of their authors so I think maybe her books are on the way I'm not sure what books those are like I said I haven't read anything by her but I was happy to see a rec come through on here because now I definitely added this one to my TBR and I'm interested because I uh, especially since I'm getting like special editions I'm curious uh and I want to give them a try before I either decide to like resell them or keep them this one okay did I keep this one pop I didn't oh my gosh but what was this one uh if we disappear here by M Hayes this was one though where I was like, I literally need to read this. I added it to my TBR immediately. Oh yes, it sounds like still beating. So our heroine, she wakes up in a, in a literal like holding cell and then she rolls over and sees that there's a man across the room from her and it's not her husband. And then a stranger starts taunting them from an old rustic speaker, a stranger who wants them to suffer with each passing day and only each other to rely on their determination becomes a fight not only for survival, but for each other. It, I'm assuming this is a romance, right? I really hope it's a romance, right? Does she say, does it say in her author, author bio? I hope so. Cause if this is a thriller, then that's going to make me sad, but I don't know. It sounded really good. Another one. Thank you. Praying for Rain Trilogy by B.B. Easton. So I've seen this one floating around over the years. So I think this is a post-apocalyptic romance. So I think it's dark. Uh, I think it's kind of like a survival theme one. Personally, I'm not like the biggest fan of like apocalypse or like post-apocalypse or even kind of like, I don't read a lot of like paranormal or anything like that. I don't know, but let me know if you guys have read this one and if it's one that I really need to consider, let me know um, because I don't currently have it on my TBR, but I have, like I know some people really love it. Next up, Mindfuck series by St. Abby. Love to see this forever and always a favorite of mine as well. It's five books, but they're all really short. They're all 200 pages. They're really easy and bingeable. And it's a serial killer in an FBI romance who is trying to catch her. And I support women's wrongs on this channel and I am just forever and always going to be a Lana Myers supporter. Uh, definitely fits into the dark category. This next one for the fans by Nyla Kay fits into the taboo forbidden one because I'm pretty sure this one is Step Brothers. And I think for some, they need to like start making money or something and they start making like OnlyFans or like online adult video content together to help make some money. Everyone tells me that I need to read this book. And maybe I do, maybe I do. Here's the thing, I have read have I read three? I've read two or three Nyla K books. I've had I've had mixed reactions to the ones that I've read. However, Push from her is still on my TBR. And if you guys keep talking about For the Fans, then I maybe have to do that. And also Double Edged was one that I was going to do for a Ban Forbidden and Taboo rating vlog. And I ended up skipping it for that vlog because it was too long. It's a long book. And I was like, I can't do another long one in this vlog. So I end up swapping it out for, I think, did I swap it out for Hail then maybe? Uh, but I do, uh, I guess just let me know in the comments if I really, really do need to read this one. Because y'all really, really love it. Uh, it's just, it's long. So I just don't know. But let me, let me know, let me know. Okay, this one, Come Out, Come Out by Alexia Onyx, A Dark Paranormal Romance. Again, I don't read a lot of paranormal, but I could be intrigued by it enough. The cover was cool, so. And another one that I haven't heard of before. This one then, Noctacadia by Carrie Lake. I was excited to see this one because it was on my January TBR and I'm really looking forward to reading it. I think I am going to buddy read it with Sam from Sam Reads a Little. Uh, she also wanted to read this one. I mean, we're both rereading Crescent City right now, so I don't think either of us really have time for it right now, but I do plan on reading this one and I'm looking forward to it. It's a 
gothic or I think a dark academia student teacher book say less say less and along the same lines gothic Hannah so I got gothic Hannah once and then also ru just runics in general which again I have the predator by runics on my TBR and gothic Hannah because again dark academia professor student why haven't I read this Let's see, if you've been watching my channel for a couple of years at this point, you will know that every single fall I put Gothic Hannah on my TBR and every single fall I have not gotten around to it. So you know what, I'm about to read this book in the dead of summer because I need to stop waiting for the fall to roll around to try to read it and then not be in the mood for it. So the second the mood strikes me, I'm gonna pick this book up. But I've heard amazing things about Runex. Uh, I know, I think they do write in third person which is like a big deal breaker for some people. It's not my personal favorite, but I can read it. So I'll let y'all know. Next, Unlawful Temptations. Oh, who is this one by? Oh, I don't think it had an author, but I'm pretty sure this one was the boss employee and cheating one that I had looked up. Yeah, right? I think she's maybe his nanny and then they start cheating. Uh, that sounds obviously forbidden, so yeah next dead man walking by gianna darling this is the sixth book in the fallen men series one of my personal favorite in the fallen men series i really really enjoy this one uh i would advise reading them in order i don't think you have to read these books in order however i do think you're going to get the best experience with it because the heroine in this one is the younger sister of the heroine from the second book and priest who is our uh male main character in this one he is the enforcer and he has like zero emotions whatsoever and it's a good one. It's really good. I, this, like I said, Inked and Lies is my favorite, followed by Good Gone Bad. And then I think this is number three. Midnight Mayhem series by Amo Jones. I need to keep going on with this series. I read the first book. Cheyenne and I read it for our book club that we used to host. It was one of our first books that we ever read. And I didn't, mm, I didn't like, I was a little confused by that book. I was a little confused. However, the one that I want to get to the most, I think is book three. I think it's MMF. I'm very intrigued by the series as a whole. I think the premise is really cool. I was just a little confused by like families and like how the whole like kind of midnight mayhem thing came to be. But I think, you know, I just need to keep going. I just need to keep going. I have the books, so I will eventually keep going on in the series. So to see it on here made me happy. And also the Elite Kings Club series made it on this as well. I've heard nothing but amazing things about Elite Kings Club. And I know she just released the first book in like the spinoff or like next gen series. Again, I also have this series on my shelf, so I will read it eventually. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to it yet, but very glad to see them making appearances on here. Amo Jones, obviously so many people love her and I really love Sicko. That's my favorite book that I've read from her. Next up, Brutal Vows by J.T. Geisinger, one that I've seen around for years and I've just never gotten around to. I've read one other J.T. Geisinger book and I liked it, uh, but this one, it's a mafia one. I think it's an arranged marriage. So I'm always down for mafia. I just have to be in the mood for it. Uh, because I, I struggle with mafia books. Now. I'm just picky with them, I guess is the right word. Uh, but I know that this is like an OG ride or die favorite for a lot of people. Do you want to come say hi? Oh, you want to help mama look at that nice sunbeam on your beautiful fur. Oh, she's so pretty. See how pretty her fur is, how it's like got that chocolate brown undertone to it. Oh my God. She's just gorgeous. You're gorgeous, gorgeous girl. You gonna go and settle in at your spot? She loves to lay like right against my pillows there. That's a good spot for you. Okay, we are almost done. Let's wrap this up. Uh, Kingdom Fall by A. Zavarelli. I think this is another nanny romance. So I would assume maybe it falls into like forbidden because it's boss employee then, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't heard of this one by A. Zavarelli before. I've read Echo. And then I also have her like Boston Underworld series. Is that what it is? That like Crow or whatever. I have all of those. Uh, so I definitely want to read more. I, I enjoyed Echo a lot. So uh, I definitely want to read more from her. So if this is one that I need to prioritize, then I will have to add it. Next is Stoneview series, Stories Trilogy by Lola King. So this one came with the comment of toxic cheating and love triangle. Yes, yes, yes. Love triangle I've been getting into more. I, I don't really read a lot of love triangles. However, I'm kind of like interested in that more right now. I think because I said I've been watching uh, The Summer I Turned Pretty. Uh, don't spoil anything. I do not know any spoilers. I don't want to know. I want to watch it organically, but say less about this one. And I did end up adding the first book of my TBR uh, because it sounded good. And last are three that I have read all of them and I enjoyed all of them. I have Hail by Kay Webster. 
let me tell you i remember so i read this one for one of my i think it was my last band forbidden and taboo reading vlog and i truly i didn't know how to rate this book when i finished this was back when i still put my ratings up on goodreads and i truly didn't know how to rate this book because I was so torn. I was so torn by it. It's obviously a, it's a taboo, taboo romance. Uh, it's banned. You can't like get it on Amazon. You have to get it from her website. It's a brother and a sister. Ah, I was just so torn because I like, I bought it. I bought into their connection. I bought into it all, but then it does have, it's an, it's a romance. So it has a happily ever after. And I was kind of like, mm, I don't know if they should. <laughs> I don't know if this should be like an ATA, but I, I enjoyed this book. I do have to say I enjoyed this book. There's a lot of, it's also like darker. Like there's a lot of stuff with mental health. There's a lot of trauma that the two of these characters go through. And obviously it's very taboo. Along the same veins, but kind of different vibe. And truly one of my favorite books of all time. Truly a favorite taboo romance of all time. Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma. I read this one for my first ever Band Forbidden Taboo reading vlog. And I remember, this was like early on in my taboo journey. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to like this. Like, there's no way. And I can't tell you how often I think about this book. I think about it on probably like a weekly basis. And I read it back in 20, I read it four years ago now it's it's stuck with me Lock and Amaya's story has stuck with me it's so heartbreaking it's just so hard to see two characters just be in these horrible circumstances that they should not have to be in and yet they are just trying to make the best of it and trying to just grow up and live their lives it's technically YA I don't feel like this is a YA book in any sense of the way except for the fact that it's like not spicy really but let me just so obviously this is another very taboo one because again we got the full bond between the two of them and they really are kind of put in a situation where they are both just trying to like grow up and graduate high school while also being forced to take care of their three younger siblings while both of their parents are completely absent and it's them kind of bonding over that and just really realizing that they have no one to rely on but each other i can't even talk about it or else i'm gonna just like lose my mind i love this book so much and it truly is incredible and last but not least birthday girl another forbidden one let's end it on a lighter note i guess with this one because it is uh, another ex's dad and it is an age gap romance so George Jordan, she is dating this one guy who's a bit of a loser, but they end up having to move into his dad's house to help save some money. And when they move in, she kind of starts bonding with his dad a little bit. And they just, they really connect, even though she's still dating his son. And then even when her and the son break up, he's like, I can't do that to my son. But they're both like, also, we want each other. So it ends up being their romance. It's great. One of my favorites by Penelope Douglas. It was my first Penelope Douglas book, actually, and I've never looked back. So anyways, that is it for today's video. Those are all of your dark, taboo, or forbidden ride or die romances. If you didn't see my Instagram story, you can drop your favorites in the comments below. Share them with everyone else. You can let me know if there's any on here that you're like, you seriously need to pick up right now. No, no promises that I'll listen, but I'll, I'll add them to the TBRs, right? So anyways, that is it for today's video, right? Aria, do you want to say bye? Oh, look at her taking a little bath. A good spot for you in the sunbeam. Anyways, that's it for today. And I'll see you when I see you.